Hello, and welcome to Can TV Conversations. My name is Laura Harris, and today we're talking about fitness and the mind body connection. Joining me today is Alex Nicandro. She is a fitness instructor at Pure Bar and a manager as well. Alex, can I ask you a few questions today? How are you? Yeah, good. I'm good. How are you? Good. So I understand you're a fitness instructor and manager. Can you explain your role about that just a little bit? Yeah, so I work for Pure Bar. Um, I started off as a teacher. I've been teaching for almost five years, really fell in love with the workout. And it's really just my go-to for both fitness, for fun, and just to uh, kind of get, you know, some more endorphins going when I'm maybe having a rough day. Um, and I used to manage a yoga studio as well, but transitioned into a manager at Pure Bar. So in that role, I pretty much oversee uh, all the studio operations as well as manage the team and um, just making sure that everything is running smoothly. Great. And how does fitness, do you think, go beyond physical health? I know everyone talks about the physical health benefits, which are great. So could you touch on the physical health benefits, but then that extra added layer of what it provides? Yes. Yeah, so uh, physical benefits, of course, a lot of people are drawn to workouts and fitness because they might want to look a certain way. Um, but really, you know, besides physically looking a certain way or achieving a certain physical goal, whether it's building strength or maybe it's weight loss, maybe it's flexibility. Um, those are all great things, but fitness goes way beyond just physical. It's also uh, a state of being when you're taking an hour or half hour or however long it is throughout your day to focus just on this one thing that could be physically challenging. It really gets you in the zone and really makes you just focus on that and let go of all of your other maybe bad parts of the day or, you know, negative feelings or just um, stresses that you might be carrying even in your body um, and in your mind. So it's, it really is just like a nice escape. So beyond um, all the physical benefits, there's so much mental benefit too. I think it's really great for um, maintaining peace of mind and giving yourself just time to focus on you. I know you touched on mentioning the mind stresses and the body stressors. And talking about mental health, can you explain what a mind-body connection is and why it's so important to try to achieve this during workouts? Yeah, I think a mind-body connection can mean different things for different people. For me, I think having a mind-body connection is really being present in that moment. So you're hyper aware to what your body's doing. You're hyper aware to how you want it to move. You're hyper aware to um, what goals you might have in that movement. And again, it just kind of pushes you into that state of mind where you're super, super focused. You're concentrated on, you know, just one thing and you can let go of other things that might be um, just in you, <laughs> you need to get out. So that could be, you know, you have a bad day or maybe, um, you know, you get bogged down with work or being super busy or stuck at home all day. I'm sure that everyone can relate to that. Um, it's, it's just that time to, to get away. So finding that mind body connection, I think just is just being fully present. And this is important to, in today's society. There's so much with vanity fitness and societal trends. So what's the importance behind personal fitness goals and growth versus following these idealized beauty standards and societal trends? Why is it so personal for your own self to have your own goals? I think that it's super important to have your own goals and not to fall into the trap of trying to look a certain way or meet an expectation that society puts out there or the media, because the truth is everyone truly is different. That goes for uh, mind and body. Um, and, you know, we have a lot to appreciate with the bodies that we have. There's so many things we couldn't do without it. So, 
uh, to almost treat it as uh, a form of punishment or, you know, put a ton of negativity and, and high expectation on body image, I think that does the opposite of, of what health can do for you, what fitness can do for you. It, it has so many positive health benefits to focus on just that little subset, that superficial part of it, you know, almost defeats the purpose in my opinion. Exactly. And I know a lot of people, it's so hard with society and with Instagram and with social media to kind of get out of that mindset and perspective when it's something that's so prevalent throughout. So I guess in general now, why should individuals move their body in a physical way? What, what are the benefits to movement aside from just exercise? Why do you need to get up and move? I think that getting up and moving, it really, it gets your blood flowing. You can't really uh, change anything if you don't change anything. So, um, you know, we're all hooked on technology these days, our computers, our phones, you know, maybe even social situations where you're sitting down, you're eating, you're watching TV hours at a time, especially now during a global pandemic where you're a little bit more limited in your activities. I think it's super important to really prioritize um, exercise, but not just exercise, just moving, whether it's going out for a walk or maybe doing a quick like 15 minute yoga flow, something that really moves and lengthens and stretches your muscles out, or maybe even challenges you and makes you sweat a little bit. I think um, physical movement is really just the key to sort of revving up that fire within you and giving yourself a little bit of vitality so that that energy and that um, excitement that you build in that moment through that physical activity can carry into anything else that you do, whether it's your work or your hobbies or your social time, it just bleeds into every area of your life if you put a high priority on it. Now, I know with physical movement, sometimes people think it needs to be exercise, but I'd argue it could be something as walking or just taking your dog on a walk, just anything like you said to get that blood flowing. I know you said you were a yoga instructor and you're a pure bar teacher. Is there anything you can demonstrate for us to show just some simple movement or a stretch just when you wake up or before you go to bed to just show that physical movement to anyone watching? Sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll stand up. I mean, in yoga, you can do so much, but even just like a super simple flow, just kind of standing up with your feet about hip width and just standing up tall. So this alone is just, uh, getting your body up and moving, even though you're standing still, you're letting everything flow, focusing on your breath and finding tall posture in your spine puts you in a really great alignment to just receive and create really great positive energy. So just standing here and doing a nice flow. So breathing in as you lift your arms up and then maybe stretching into a little back bend because we hunch over so much throughout our day, especially if you're in front of a computer. So opening up this whole chest area and lengthening your spine for a back bend is so helpful. And then coming back up and then taking the opposite, going down into a forward fold to lengthen your spine downward, bend your knees and kind of let gravity take over and just kind of doing a couple of those um, in the morning. That's just a really super simple way to get your body moving and flowing, especially if you're not quite awake yet. Um, for bedtime, I love a simple, you know, child's pose. So bring the camera down. <laughs> um, but just coming to the floor with your knees wide and then, you know, resting your head all the way down here um, lengthens your spine. It opens up your hips. It calms your mind, you know, with your head down, you can't see anything. You can close your eyes and just focus on your breath. I love that for evening time. Um, it's just a great way to wind down and maybe do a little meditation and reflect on your day and put your body in a really calm state so that you can uh, fall asleep and be peaceful. So nothing super intimidating, something that everybody can do. <laughs> I know I need to do more of that in the morning and just for calming after sitting on a desk during 
all these classes and during work. So that's great tips. So thank you. And I guess as an instructor, when you talk about that mind-body connection, a lot of people aren't aware of that or what it is or how to achieve it. So just as an instructor, what are your personal goals while teaching that you want clients to take away from their workout, from their experience, from their class? What's something you want to try to instill in them and make sure you can help provide them? Yeah, well, I think going off of just finding that mind-body connection, I think that alone goes a long way. And that's something that I strive to make all of our clients find. It's just one hour of your day where you can be in the studio. You don't have your cell phone around. So um, I try to really encourage, you know, not just looking, but listening, you know, what is it that you hear? What cues can you hear that will inspire you to move your body in a different way and maybe find something new in your workout, whether it's changing your position slightly to feel more core activation or um, really tapping into the mind-body connection by, you know, feeling accomplished in the workout itself. Because if you can do something really hard physically in a class, imagine what you can do outside of class. If you can get through a tough plank or a tough set of push-ups all the way to the end, you know, even if it's down on your knees, that alone can build so much confidence in you and make you feel like you can achieve more than that. So um, I think that's what I strive to instill in my clients is just uh, going for it, being okay with where you are and being proud of where you are in that moment. I definitely think building the confidence is something everyone needs to work on. So it's nice that when you take care of your health, physically, mentally, and emotionally, it helps add extra confidence to you because at the end of the day, you want it for yourself, for you, not for anyone else. And then it reflects in society, your confidence. And it's just something that's super special you can have. So I love that. Now, what does overall all health mean to you and how does fitness kind of tie into that? Oh, overall health. I think overall health means you feel just really good. <laughs> and that means feeling good in your body. So, you know, not having any aches and pains or feeling like you overworked something uh, in a bad way. I think it means uh, feeling like the food that you ate was nutritious and energizing, feeling like you have lots of energy, you didn't oversleep and you're not um, super tired. Uh, I think feeling good physically is part of it. And then just, again, that mental aspect, feeling comfortable in your own skin. Um, and just feeling like you can be yourself and feeling like you're in a, a healthy state of mind. Your interactions with everybody are good, they're positive, um, and you're just free to flow and be as you are. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's really cool that overall health is all encompassing of every different aspect of your health. It goes beyond just physical fitness. It becomes mental and emotional. And I think working out, giving you that confidence, giving you security just on so many different levels is something really, really special that you can do for yourself. Um, Alex, I want to thank you. I want to thank Alex Nicondro for joining us today to have this important discussion about fitness and the mind-body connection. And I want to thank the viewers for watching Can TV Conversations. I'm Laura Harris. Have a good night. Thank you.